This video gives an overview about developing remote plugins for the vSphere client and shows how to create a sample remote plugin. Developing a remote plugin requires the vSphere client SDK, a programming language, and a build automation tool. This video uses Java and Maven, but you can choose your own tools. Starting with vSphere 6.7 Update 1, the vSphere client uses a remote plugin architecture and ensures a future-proof platform for building UI extensions for both vSphere and VMware Cloud on AWS. The vSphere client remote plugin architecture provides the following enhancements over the local plugin architecture. It improves vCenter server stability and enhances the ability to troubleshoot vendor plugins. It removes vCenter server upgrade dependencies from third-party solutions. It supports multiple plugin versions and multiple plugin instances for linked vCenter servers. Finally, it improves the performance and scalability of the vSphere client and the plugin itself. The steps to create the remote plugin sample are download the vSphere client 7.0 SDK. Build the sample with the MVN clean install command. Start the Spring Boot application server with the Java command. Register the plugin with the extension registration script and enhance the remote plugin sample with new extensions. Let's assume you've downloaded the SDK and walk through creating a sample remote plugin. Open a command prompt and change to the HTML client SDK samples remote plugin sample starter folder. To build the remote plugin, run the MVN clean install command. When the command completes, a build success message appears. To view the remote plugin sample, start the local Spring Boot application server with a command like this example, but substitute the details for your vCenter server. In this command, the vCenter.guid parameter specifies your vCenter server GUID, the vCenter.thumbprint parameter specifies your vCenter server thumbprint, and the vCenter.fqdn parameter specifies your vCenter server fully qualified domain name. You can get this information from the vSphere client. For example, here is the vCenter server URL and here is the vCenter server GUID. To get the vCenter server thumbprint, click the browser's ellipsis menu, then click More Tools and Developer Tools. Select the Security tab, click View Certificate, and go to the Details tab and copy the thumbprint information. In a command prompt from the HTML client SDK, Samples Remote Plugin Sample Starter folder, start the Spring Boot application server. Confirm that the messages Tomcat started and started Spring Boot application are displayed. Next, register the sample plugin by using the plugin extension registration tool. Construct a command like this example. This command requires several parameters, including the vCenter server URL, the key of the remote plugin sample, the plugin URL, and the Spring Boot application thumbprint. For more information about these parameters, see the Developing Remote Plugins with the vSphere Client SDK documentation on code.vmware.com. To get the Spring Boot application thumbprint in a browser, navigate to the URL localhost 8443 sample UI plugin.json. For the purposes of this video, ignore the insecure connection warning. To get the certificate details, use the same steps you previously performed to get the vCenter server thumbprint. From the HTML client SDK, Tools, vCenter plugin registration, prebuilt folder, register the sample plugin with vCenter server. 
confirm that the message successfully registered to vCenter appears. As we are still logged in to the vSphere client, click Refresh Browser to load the remote plugin. To verify that the remote plugin is installed, navigate to the Administration menu and select Client Plugins. The sample remote plugin appears in the list with a deployed enabled status. Now that the sample plugin is installed, let's add some functionality. Plugin extensions enable you to modify the vSphere client's default views, menus, or other UI controls. To add an extension, you need two files. A file that contains the HTML to be displayed in the vSphere client, and the plugin.json file, which declares what areas of the vSphere client the plugin modifies and contains the data that the vSphere client uses to load the extension UI. Using a text editor, create a data center summary.html file with the following content. Save the file to the HTML client SDK samples remote plugin sample starter source main resources static folder. In the same directory, edit the json.plugin file and add the data center content as a new object, highlighted here just after the global section. The extension instructs the vSphere client to load the contents of the data center summary.html URI served by the plugin server, the Spring Boot application in the current example. This UI content is loaded within the plugin iframe of a data center summary page portlet. Rebuild the plugin with the data center summary extension by running the MVN clean install command. As before, when the command completes, a build success message appears. Then restart the Spring Boot application server with the java-jar target remote plugin sample starter 6.7.0 snapshot jar command. Confirm that the messages Tomcat started and started Spring Boot application are displayed. To redeploy the plugin in the vSphere client, navigate to the client plugins page and add the parameter question mark plugin developer mode equals true to the URL. Select the remote plugin sample and click redeploy. Click refresh browser. To view the extension in the vSphere client, navigate to your data center by selecting Hosts and Clusters from the menu. The data center summary page displays the new plugin portlet along with sample content. For more information about deploying remote plugins, see the Developing Remote Plugins with the vSphere Client SDK documentation at code.vmware.com.